grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome. Today we are looking at the topic, the great monarch, the great monarch, this great monarch. And when you talk about the great monarch, you are talking about there is no monarch like this, our God. And Psalm 145, one of my favorite scriptures I like to read, especially when it comes to eulogizing the Lord. He said, I will extol you, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and I will praise your name forever and ever. So he is eternally grounded in himself. That means he on, on, on nothing else. God is himself. God is grounded in himself. God is rooted in himself. Every other creature or thing has their roots in God as the source, as the sustainer. And God is such a king in such a way that there is nothing external of him that it depends on. Everything external of him depends on him. There is nothing we can give to him that he didn't first own by right of creation. Nothing superior can be conferred on me. There are many superior things that can be conferred on me, on any creature as well, if we in our humility be able to acknowledge that. Because no matter where we are, there's always a next level, there's always a higher dimension. But God is such a monarch that nothing can be conferred upon him. And you know in life, you can marry certain things or certain things can be conferred on you. And usually, maybe conferment might be because of rights of being born into a place, affiliation or what have you. But God is such that nothing superior can be conferred. Because there's nothing superior above him. There is nothing that is, um, ab nothing, nothing, nothing conceivable exists above him. So therefore, in certain cases, people could confer a blessing and anointing, a grace and what have you. But you can't do that on God because God himself is the supreme in every one of those things. I love this. He never came into existence, nor we ever go out of existence. Every one of us and every creature, there was a time we were all in a state of nothingness until God called us forth into existence. We were first once in a state of non-life before God called us into life. We were first into a state of non-being before God gave being to our non-beingness, if there's a word like that. So God alone, that's why in the place of praise and worship and adoration, singing songs of melody to Him, we are saying that, Lord, you are the great monarch that never came into existence every other monarch and when we are talking about the great monarch we are talking about things that are unique only to god things that are exclusively only for god god alone is the only monarch that never came into existence nor can ever go out of existence every one of them can go back to their nothingness but god alone is the only one this is why this is what strengthens our faith and is food to our soul because we just appreciate the fact that this God is magnificent in his own right. He's not great because we make him great or anything makes him great. He's great. His greatness is in, in within himself. What a joy. At the heart of his being is his righteousness. That is, the righteousness of God is such that God will not do any wickedness. God can do no injustice. There are monarchs that can do evil. Even in the best and the best of monarchs we can't attest that there are certain times that there might be no inclination or maybe not even deeds or so but the thought of their heart one way they could have misjudged they are not god they are not perfect they could one way have air in certain pronouncements or decrees that they've made but god is the only monarch that at the center the core of his being there is no such thing as an error or an unjust decision that he has ever made he has never he has never treated any creature wrong. He has never done wrong to any creature. Ah, but you know the, the, the innumerable wrong that he has been done to. <laughs> I mean, the unfair treatment, God will be merciful and yet people or creatures will turn against, rebel and what have you. But God has yet never in his righteousness because it is his nature to be right. Is not righteousness is not what he possesses like something from X and I. That is who he is, the righteous God. What a joy. Before his wisdom we stand silent. Before the manifold wisdom of God, before the unsearchable wisdom of God, before the infinite wisdom of God, we stand silent. Let me read this. Uh, I could read from because the wisdom of God essentially is the being of God himself the wisdom of God we can define wisdom as the means through which God uses to accomplish any task 
there's this wisdom in creation which is still unsearchable and exhaustible in itself how the plant kingdom give oxygen to humanity and humanity gives carbon dioxide to its its i mean it's wisdom in another level romans 11 33 all the depths of both of the riches of both the wisdom and the knowledge of God. Oh, the depth of the riches of both the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. So the wisdom of God is such that there's nothing that can explain it because God in his wisdom can use the weakest of his tools or materials to accomplish great feats. He can use few to accomplish much. He can pass the Red Sea with not a mighty ocean, with not a mighty weapon. That's the wisdom. And his wisdom is such that he can use the full the things men despise as being foolish, as weak as a base, and use it to accomplish great things so that all glory will come unto him. He is in need of nothing. I love this as well. He is most blessed in himself. Ah, hallelujah. I think this should humble us in anything we, are, we think we are giving to him or anything people think because every other monarch will need something. Even if they don't need finance or wealth, treasury, or I mean, uh, this is because maybe, maybe the territory is rich and whatever, but they still need oxygen from God to stay alive. <laughs> and there are certain things that they don't have power to have except God and the sovereignty makes available. But God is such that he is in need of nothing. I think this should settle this in our heart. So anytime, anytime we have opportunity to give unto, not him per se, because it doesn't have anything to him, but give unto his kingdom or give unto his cause, we now, in our heart of heart, our prayer should be that, Lord, let it just be acceptable in your sight, because you are not in need of this thing. You are most blessed in yourself. Because by right of creation, you own everything. You even own us. Say the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell in it so when we are looking at this great monarch this is why we set our gaze on him and as we are looking onto him we are like our heart is rejoicing because it's based on understanding and revelations of how magnificent this god is he's in need of nothing he's most blessed in himself everything god needs exists within himself he doesn't need wisdom from out he doesn't need uh, power to be outsourced to be to, to be sourced from another. He doesn't need patience as an attribute to get from somewhere else. Everything he needs is within himself. For whoever must be the greatest monarch must of necessity be the highest in everything. The highest in everything. Whoever is going to be the great monarch, he must be the highest in everything. There must be no lack in him. There must be no one that has a superior attribute or a superior virtue or perfection or excellence above him. So whether it's in terms of power, it must be the zenith of power. Whether it's in terms of, uh, talk in terms of um, knowledge, it must be the consumptium or the compendium of all knowledge. There must be none that knows more than him. So in everything, it must be the highest. So nothing conceivable is above him. We can't conceive anything above him. We can't speak anything that will be ever, uh, that, that, that no matter what we speak, it is infinitely more than what we speak. It's infinitely more than what we can describe. It's infinitely more than what we can think. So we can we are dealing with a monarch, and this is a joy because for me, and I'm sure for you as well, that this great monarch is our father. And if you know what it takes in the olden days, I wasn't alive then, but reading from materials, what it takes to be to stand before a king or to come close to a king or to even have a relationship with a king. It's, it's a thing, it's a prestigious thing. But now this great monarch of the universe, who neither slumbers nor sleep, has made himself our father in Christ Jesus, one we can approach one that gives us unrestricted access to him and gives attention to us as if there were no other in his creation or the joy so nothing conceivable is above him no matter what we can conceive there will be nothing that is, even there's nothing conceivable that is at his level or the joy his existence is underived every other person's existence every other creature's existence is as derived from him there's a causation causation c-a-u-s a T I O N. That is, there is a cause for every existence. That is, there is something that actually batted or gave uh, existence to 
anything we see on the any creature that we see but god is the only one that is underived he has an underived bead he is without an origin he neither in there was never a time he has never been and there will never be a time he wouldn't be and so we see that he's with, he alone is without an origin angels have an origin um uh, the elders in heaven i believe in my opinion have an origin god alone in his triuneness is the only one with an origin. that's why it's called the eternal father the eternal son and the eternal spirit the one true god he is the highest in every virtue there is so when we talk about patience the standard of patience is god love is love himself the standard of love is god when we talk about goodness the standard of goodness is god as the lord jesus christ said none is good but god when we talk about knowledge when we talk about long suffering when we talk about mercifulness when we talk about uh, the infinity god is always the standard in any virtue if there's any virtue god is the standard and the joy of this that this standard that is god we want to say this is one of the things that makes us to adore him as the great monarch as the one that so it's not a monarch that is uh, maybe uh, there, there could be any other being that could be kinder than him that there could be any other king or any other creature that can be wiser than him or more powerful no he's the highest in every virtue so in filling all things he has left no room for another god hallelujah that is in his omnipotence in his infiniteness in his immeasurableness god has left no room for another god <laughs> that is because whoever is infinite must fill everywhere with himself so there is no place is not is where i am now from this ministration is where you are wherever anybody is every one of us we are existing in him Creation itself is existing in God. In Him we live, we move, and have our being. So God in His infiniteness, in His sovereignty, has made this in such a way that there is no room for another God to exist. Oh, people might craft gods with their hands or dead gods and what have you, but obviously those are not really. That's why God calls Himself the living God. So God has left no room for another God because His glory He will not share. This is his creation and this is his stirring and so they can never, it, it, is, it is unavailable to another sovereign being, it is unavailable to another infinite being. There will never be an infinite being because one finite being who is the true and living God will share that space with nobody or that title. He is not conscious of any kind of loss or ending. So to you and I or creatures, I mean things come our way, information or some kind of um, news or policies in the country whereby it could almost you could almost say that people could be threatened because they are not god and but god is such that nothing can is not conscious of it that what if this happens i mean as creatures and whoever the people could think that look an earthquake or something could happen and yet not that we are fearful of sorting as Christians, but a consciousness, but God is so that he can never be conscious of any kind of loss or threat because nothing can threaten him. He alone cannot be threatened by anything. So he alone can't be threatened. Every other thing could be threatened, whether by someone or circumstance or situation, anything can threaten him. But God alone is the one that owns this property, the property of untreatableness if there's a word like that that is he can't be threatened by anything nobody can threaten him no situation nothing in existence nothing can ever be in existence that will ever threaten him because of why it's omnipotence because he's the great monarch so when we are praising him when we are adoring him when we are worshiping him we are saying that lord we thank you because you alone can be threatened you alone never came into being you alone are without an origin what a joy there is none like you goodness is the brightness of his being as light is the brightness of the sun because you look at the sun and the sun does nothing but gives light a great, a great character and the light he gives it in abundance and that light nothing external of the sun can reduce the intensity of the light it brings forth and no matter how, how, how innumerable creatures are the sun has enough light to be able to minister its light its heat to everyone that cares to expose themselves to it so goodness is the brightness of the being of god so when we say goodness is the being that means god in his default mode is bound to be good say the lord is good to all let me read from psalm 33 verse i think that verse 3 or 5 psalm 33 verse 3 or 5 psalm 33 the lord is good to all 
Psalm 33 verse uh, 5. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of God. The earth is full of the goodness of God. And infinity is the jewel of his crown. I could take this from Jeremiah chapter 23, 23 and 24. Jeremiah 23, 23 and 24. That the Lord himself, am I a God near at all? says the Lord, and not a God afar off. Can anyone hide himself in secret places? Shall I not see him, says the Lord? Do I not feel heaven and earth, says the Lord? So infinity is one of the jewels we believe of his crown. That is the infiniteness that God is without bound. There is no space, God is not. And God is also eternal in his infinity in time wise. That is, is without there's no dispensation of ever a time where God was not. So infinity is the jewel of his crown. No other monarch can point that infinity is a jewel in their crown. Mm -mm. Nobody. We don't have two infinite beings. We will never have two infinite beings. So infinity is the jewel of God's crown. Isn't this a great monarch? I you want to use the word the greatest monarch, but we just want to use the great monarch that is, or this great monarch. That is, every other monarch is not really a monarch. They are just a shadow of, or they are a minute aspect. Their title of the office they carry is just pointing that this is the great monarch. We don't have two sons per se. But give me a light on the air. There's just one unique one, and so his throne has no successor. Every other throne has successor. Every other monarch can be replaced, and I'll be replaced either by death or by substitution, circumstance, or what have you. But God alone is a monarch that his throne has no successor. None precedes him. He didn't become a monarch after another was there. Because there was never one before him. Nothing precedes him and nothing will succeed him. So, uh, what a joy. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful to God for this material because it helps me in the place of adoration, in the place of praising, in the place of keeping my heart. He said, The Lord will keep him in perfect peace whose heart is stayed on him. So, as the sovereign one, he can make happy or miserable forever. God can make happy or miserable forever and the greatness of this our God is like he alone has the property of sovereignty of absoluteness let me read from first Samuel chapter 2 from verse 6 first Samuel chapter 2 verse 6 this is Anna praising the Lord the Lord kills and makes alive he brings down to the grave and brings up he brings he brings down to the grave and brings up. Verse 7. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the hardship to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. He has set the world upon them. So he can make happy or miserable forever. We fear such a monarch. We fear, as the Lord Jesus Christ said, don't fear the one who can kill the body but can't do anything to the soul. But that one who can destroy both the body and the soul, <laughs> tremble before him. His default inclination is always to deal bountifully with his creature. That is the first inclination of God. Now let me read again from, from another, I mean, from Psalm 145 again. We said the Lord is good to all. God is good to his creatures. Obviously, it doesn't mean that God condones any kind of acts. I mean, rebellious acts or wickedness. God will not condone such things. Verse 145, verse 9. The Lord is good to all. Verse 145, verse 9. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. So his default inclination is always to deal generously, benevolently, munificently with his creatures. That's why in that same Psalm 145, said he gives food to all that wait upon him. Verse 15. The eyes of all look expectantly to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Is that not a good God? There is no eclipse of his brightness. You know the eclipse is when the sun, or technically the sun is, um, we could almost say from our own ways of looking thing, almost like a switch over and there seems to be a decrease in the light or in the brightness of something. There is no such with God. It's the effulgence of his brightness, which is that the intense extreme. That's why uh, First Timothy talks about 
God who dwells in unapproachable light. His light is not fluctuating. There's no fluctuation in that which is of God. So His glory, there's no eclipse. There is no diminution in His wisdom, nor His power, nor His, his mercy. Anything God is and has is infinite. So, and what is infinite doesn't have the property of reduction or increase. It's infinite because it's infinite. It can increase, it can decrease. It's just what it is. So there is no eclipse of his brightness. That's why I said as we behold him as in a glass in a mirror, we are being transformed from glory to glory. God is his own habitation. Every other creature has a place where they live, an environment whereby, whereby they strive the most, an, ex, an environment where they can only exist. The fishes can only exist in water. Man can only exist on the long term in on the land here, birds in the air. But God is his own environment. So God cannot be bound to say that he can only exist in heaven. He's living in there in every contrite heart. So we can see the fact that God is his own environment. God is his own habitation. So it's not if he if he as he as he has decided in his kind heartedness and love and grace to dwell in our hearts in the New Testament, it doesn't mean that he's bound or is constrained by it. Mm -mm, no. God can never be constrained because there's no boundary anyone can set for him. He is the one that sets boundary for every other thing. It depends on non praise. God is his own blessedness. And let me read from verse Psalm 145 that sometimes it's people will say things or everybody's level of understanding is different and even my I myself I'm begging God to know more about him to grow in him so there's because God is such that his knowledge is uh, without an end and sometimes people will say oh if you don't praise God God is in need of praise he's, he's, he said the stones will rise up and praise him God is most blessed in himself that we praise him is not that, that he adds any virtue to him or any essence don't get me wrong God loves it when we praise Him. It is sweet to Him. He inhabits the praise of His people. But let's not be a fool to think that because we praise Him, He is now better than He has ever been. Or there is some kind of essence of virtue that has been added or conferred upon Him. Mm -mm. God is most blessed in Himself. He beholds Himself and is most excited and is most blessed in Himself. That's why in that uh, Exodus 33, when He passed through for Moses, and He said, that, Look, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful long suffering and goodness i mean it's like god eulogizing himself so in uh, isaiah 50 46 verse 9 say remember the former things of old for i am god and there is no other i am god and there is none like me so there is it depends on non praise is his own blessedness verse 10 declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. He went ahead in verse 11, calling a bed of prey from the east, the man who executes my counsel from a far country. Indeed, I have spoken it, and I will also bring it to pass, as I have proposed it, and I will also do it. So God is the King of heaven. God is the King in every sphere, in every realm. The King alone, down to the King eternal, immortal, the only wise God is the king in heaven so the next few pages will be looking at let me go to first timothy uh, uh, first timothy chapter one and now verse 17 or there about so we'll be looking at a list of the things not things of some of the titles his titles are numberless his king also over all the earth is king i think that's in zechariah but let me read timothy first timothy verse six first timothy verse six sorry first timothy chapter 1 verse 17 now to the king eternal immortal invisible to god who alone is wise be honor and glory forever and ever so god is king over all the earth so it's not just king in the heaven alone god is king meaning that he is rulership and his reign um, his reign also covers the entire place on the earth so the real king and the real head or the real leader in every country is god because he said the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell in it it might not be like physically like this is god we see on the white house or in the in the political space but he has influence because the rulers of the kings of this earth submit and they bow to him he is king of ages in terms of kings are not i mean monarchs the regular monarchs they have an age not even age because maybe an age i don't know is it a thousand years or hundred years but they they don't live forever. They, there's an age in which they are, or a dispensation, or a time frame in existence. But God is the one that is king over all the ages. Before any age, 
after any age after any dispensation god is king he's also king of glory as well and maybe i'll read from psalms oh, okay let's take the king of righteousness he's also the king of righteousness that is um hebrews 7 talks about that mckissadek would believe that, that is just god <laughs> song without father without mother but that's uh, my own understanding of it but that king of righteousness in the sense that god will not do any wicked act god is always right in his ways god is always just in his way and whatever righteousness also mean apart from moral uh, uh, being uh, apart from the moral attribute righteousness also mean that whatever god says so if god says good morning and you look at the time or you look outside it is evening and it's dark it's actually morning if you look again you find that that thing that's saying because god cannot both be right because it can never be wrong if god should say uh for example um um god let's say there's a cup of water and it's very hot it's steamy hot and say oh wow this cold cup or this cold this cold water it's no longer hot if you touch it so god cannot because his words are law he's also the king of the jews hmm, hallelujah as the as uh, as the pilot had mentioned the right the common jews are the covenant people of god so god is also king of the jews and hallelujah by the new covenant we are part of that covenant the people of god so the jews in a sense i represent the children of god the redeemed of the lord what a joy he's also the king of glory i read this from psalm 24 lift up your heads o ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting door and let the king of glory come in who is this king of glory so verse 7 it says lift up your heads o ye gates and be lifted up ye everlasting door and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory is the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads o ye gates lift up you everlasting door and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory is the lord of hosts he is the king of glory what a joy and as the king of glory is also the lord of hosts that's like the military title of god the military and the captain of of the lord of hosts he's also the king of kings and we see this in revelations uh, more pronounced in revelations chapter 19 the king of kings as well all kings owe their crown to him verse 16 or oh, let me read from verse uh 15 now out of his mouth this uh, the lord jesus after the battle of Armageddon in ascension is the king of kings the date but the the the, the story or the accounts i'm reading is from revelation 19 15. now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron he himself treads the wine press of the fairness and the wrath of the almighty and he has on his robe and is high tie a name written king of kings and the lord of lords it's not just king over humans it's not just king over celestial beings over powers it's also king over situations over circumstances he rules he said the lord the earth is the lord he's also lord of lords as well from that revelation 19 that every other lord lord means owner possessor is that the lord of lord he owns everything that is in the existence everything in the existence uh i mean all their sustenance to him that's how he's able to uphold all things by the word of his power so when we talk about the great monarch we are talking about the monarch whose attributes are unparalleled they are matchless they are um, there is no comparison to him there's nothing descriptive of this great monarch he's not similar to anyone none is similar to him he's not an example of anything and nothing is an example of him no means of measure can define his limitless limitlessness that is there is nothing there's no metrics to use with god every one of us we have if we put ourselves on the weight there are seven pounds or seven units of measurement nobody if whether it is in, uh, we want to measure our hand there's no human being that doesn't have a boundary boundary in terms of height boundary in terms of weight boundary in terms of everything age what have you there's always a limit but god is the only one that is no existing and there will never be any metrics by god is beyond such being weight because he who is infinite and immeasurable is beyond all kinds of scale is enduringly strong is entirely sincere that is it's one thing to be strong you know uh, someone could be strong but they are not infinitely strong their strength their strength could be measured their strength could be for a period and they might be weak again until they refuel or recharge again but god is eternally there is no fluctuation in the strength of god also is entirely sincere that's why it's always good to open up our heart and to just be sincere with god 
for God because God sees all things. All things are naked before Him, and uh, He will not. It's not into pranks. God is not into uh, maybe uh, being politically right. God is entirely sincere. He's immortally graceful. God in Himself is grace. That He said, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. He's also imperially powerful. That is, there is not. There is no power that is above Him. There is nothing that can diminish His power, and His power and His might is such, or strength is such that He doesn't need to be recharged. He doesn't need to be replenished, because what, what every other power or might has to be replenished, whether because as you're using it, it's reducing. But there's no such with God. He's also impartially merciful. Ha! Ah, we need that mercy. Because he said the mercy of the Lord in that Psalm 136. He said, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good and his mercies endures forever. The mercy of God is what we are enjoying. It is new to us every day. He said, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good and his mercies endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of God for his good and his mercies endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords for his mercy endures forever. All things came out of him. And this is part of the reason why God is in need of nothing. Because God owns everything by creation. Even by the fact that he's upholding all things. So everything. So in praising this great monarch, we are praising him. Because one of the reasons that all things came out of him. He didn't come out of anything. In that John 1.1, 1, 1, he said in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. All things were made by him for without him was nothing made that was made so the the source the roots the origin the existence the life and the 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 the, the, the being of every creature actually came forth from him so what a joy what a joy because just sing it to him El Elyon, you're talking about the mighty god the mighty creator the one who is upholding all yet himself being upheld by none Ah, hallelujah so not only that all things came out of him all things also exist through him it is through him everything finds existence because whatever god is not sustaining is just wasting his time all things is not existing really so all things exist through him and i'll go back to maybe I'll, let me read from romans 11 again for all things are of him through him and for him Romans 11 36 he said follow him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever and ever so all things exist through him it is by the word of his power is able to uphold all things that is the medium through which if anything has motion if anything has life is because God has given it life and motion anytime God withdraws his influence from any being or creature that is the end of that creature but what a joy to this great monarch he's not he doesn't abuse that sovereign power but he's actually he actually uses it for the good of his creation all things also will return to him still applicable in that romans 11 36 fall of him that is is the source all things came out of him and through him is the medium through which all things have been maintained and sustained and for him or to him that is all things return is the goal is the destination is the reason why anything was created God is the reason for the existence of anything and all things must ultimately come back to submit to him. All things, all things without exception. Even the wicked from in the great white throne judgment in Revelation 20, they are all coming to be judged and of course and from there be cast into the lake of fire. But the joy for us as Christians is that we have this great God with our Father. You see, you can't have someone like this, a great monarch, and be depressed and be discouraged and be fearful of something external. That's why he wants us to grow in the knowledge of him because it strengthens our confidence. He is the key of knowledge and the wellspring of wisdom. That is the key of knowledge itself. Is the is the consumptium or the compendium of all knowledge. There is nothing that God doesn't know. You and I don't know a lot of things. Actually, what we know is a drop. What we don't know is an ocean. And so that's why a lot of the burden of the New Testament is that we are praying that the Lord will open the eyes for understanding, that the Lord will give us the spirit of wisdom and deeper revelation of Him. It's also the wellspring of wisdom. And the wisdom that God has is not a wisdom that is just in a particular area of life. In life, people, we have specialists in different fields and specialists are simply, they have wisdom in an area, whether in the medical space, in the legal space, in whatever area, political space. There are people who are specialists in certain areas, just the function of the wisdom that know. Wisdom is the fruit, the seed of wisdom is knowledge. But God knows and God is the all-wise one. 
if it's the only wise one that means every other thing is foolish in his eyes so that's why all nations are nothing before him so it's also the doorway of deliverance and the pathway of peace god is the doorway so deliverance from any situation that's why psalm 91 very encouraging they say he that dwells in the secret place of the most i shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord is my refuge and my fortress so he is the doorway of deliverance he is the mighty deliverer himself and also the pathway of peace peace is not something that god has god himself is the peace the prince of peace god himself there is no true peace absence of god because it is the presence of God that actually said the Lord will give we, 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 uh, the Lord will keep him in perfect peace whose heart is stayed on me because God himself is peace God is the peace that still storms God because nothing can threaten him so nothing can threaten his peace what a joy he is the highway of holiness and the gateway of glory the beauty of his holiness it is God himself so you can see a lot of things I mean a, till eternity we will never have we will never run out of words we will run out of words because that's why we have we can praise god in tongues but we will never have enough time to be able to eulogize him without even repeating any eulogy we are giving to him is also the gateway of glory said christ in me the hope of glory glory is the manifestation of god himself what a joy to the greatness of our god that's why i said in let everything that has breath praise the lord why are we praising him for his munificence for his greatness for his majesty oh what a joy his life is indestructible any life is destructible the plant life the animal life the human life the angelic life any life can be and any life can be uh subject to pollution like in the case of man in the garden of eden but god is so that his life is indestructible there's nothing anyone can do or anything can do that will pollute the sun because the sun is infinitely higher above us here so god's life is in this that's why it's called the eternal life of god his goodness is inexhaustible it is matchless god's goodness is not just that god has enough in his treasury to feed to provide to care for his creatures infinitely more than his creatures we ever need that's just the the greatness one of the the the, the 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 outstanding uniqueness of our god is not stingy it's not miser it's very prudent he hates waste but yet he has a more than enough for any creature say call upon me and i'll show you great and mighty things which you don't know about his mercy is everlasting his love is self-motivated the mercy of god is everlasting and that's psalm 136 that we were reading earlier on psalm 136 God most high, Jesus Christ, you are Elohim Israel. To him, verse 7, to him who made great light and his message endures forever. The sun to rule by day for his message endures forever. His love is self-motivated. It means that the love God has towards his creatures, especially for us in the new covenant, is not because of us. He said, while we are yet sinners, God Christ died for us. God commended his love towards us. So the love was not because we had this one thing we did or not. Don't get me wrong. It's not like God doesn't want us to live right before him. He's most pleased when we do that. But let's not think that the love is uh, some kind of a transactional love God has towards us. Before we were created, he loved us. Ephesians 1 talks about the fact that he brought us in union with Christ so that we can stand blameless and faultless before him in love. His word is immutable. His reign is eternal. When he speaks, his word becomes law. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not a dot of his word. Also, his reign, he rules, his kingdom is forever and ever. There is no tenor to it. We had, there was a time we had the Roman Empire. There was a time it was the Greek. There was a time it was the Persian. I mean, on and on, this, all these empires and what have you, kingdoms, they had their periods and they faced out of it. But God is the only one that is eternal. His yoke is easy. Let me go to Matthew 11, and because the greatness of this monarch is such that every other monarch, their yoke could be a body in a terror, huh? <laughs> could be so hard, and their body could be high. But he said, Come unto me, all you that labor. Verse 28, uh, Matthew 11 28, Come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your soul for my yoke is easy 
and my burden is light. <laughs> I mean, this is part of the reason why we, we can't help but just give thanks to Him. That you do so much for us and it's just very little you tell us to just take of you. Your burden could be in terms of in place of intercession for one another, for His kingdom, in the place of um, talking to others about Christ, in the place of laboring in His kingdom, laboring the Word of God. We're talking in terms of giving ourselves to be used by Him to be a blessing to generation. Nothing is invisible to Him and because you can't escape His sight. Nothing is invisible. There are certain things that are invisible to me because to every mortal man, we don't see everything that there is to see. It is not all the things that are... It's not only the visible things around us that are the things to be seen. There are many things around us that are, they are, not, they are unseeable by the natural eyes. But before God, all things are naked before Him. Nothing is invisible to Him. Let me go to Hebrews chapter 4. Did I say Hebrews? Yeah, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. The greatness of our God. The omniscience one, the God in whom not oh, went to us. And, sorry, Hebrews 4, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, 13. Hebrews 4, it says, And there is no creature, verse 13, for there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. All things are naked. In that uh, Jeremiah 23, I mentioned, it say, Can anyone hide where I will not see? Do I not feel heaven and earth with myself? So all things are plain before him. He just does not only see what is outward, he also sees what is going on in the heart of every creature. That's why we fear before this great God. You can't outlive him. He's such a being that no one can outlive him. Before anything came into existence, he has been. When everything is gone, he will still remain God. That's why I said, He's God who was who is and who is to come. Who was that is before time started. In eternity past, he has been. In the present, he is. In the future, huh? eternity future, God still remains the same without any fluctuation to whatever it is. So, he is a monarch that you can outlive. In any place, there are monarchs that people will outlive because they are children and those younger than them. In all probability, we outlive them. But God is such a monarch that nobody is going to outlive and nobody precedes him. You can see the greatness of this our God, the greatness of our monarch, the greatness of our, the majesty of Him. So it's a privilege to praise Him. It's a privilege to pray to Him. It's an honor to fellowship with Him, to have communion with Him, to have access to this great monarch. Without Him, everything falls apart. Everything. In that uh, Colossians chapter 1, because He sustains all things, so without Him, nothing can ever have its proper place. Ephesians, sorry, Colossians chapter 1. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him, and is before all things, and in him all things consist. That is, all things have been of help. He's the one that sub all, all things subsist in him. That is, all things have their existence. Uh, just like a hub and a wheel, everything has a uh, as it as it's been. Everything gets its sustenance, its existence in this great monarch of us. Uh, for by him and is before all things, and in him all things consist. And so there has never been any like him. That's why we say it's incomparable. It's dissimilar with everything. That nothing is similar to him. He's not an example of anything, and nothing is an example of him. There is no alternative to him. There's nothing superior to him. There's nothing on his own level. <laughs> he is in his own class. He is in his own highland. God is his own pedestal. <laughs> is his own standard. Is his own basis of comparison. And there will never be any like him. Huh. I mean, we just say, Elion, God Most High. Jesus Christ, you are Elohim, <laughs> Israel. I mean, it's like, that's why songs of praise and adoration keeps bursting from our spirit and our heart in, in gratefulness to this great monarch. That this great monarch has time, individual time for us. He's even saying he's knocking the door of our heart for us to open to fellowship with us with the majesty of his being. Even the counselor in your county, I don't think he has enough time to say he has time for everybody in that community, let alone the mayor or the governor or the president. But this great monarch of the universe, he has more than enough time for each. Say, God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. The eyes of the Lord rose to and fro the whole world, 
showing himself strong and mighty on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. So there will never, there has never been any like him and there will never be any like him. He is in his own class, he is his own habitation, he is his own law, he is his own light by which we see, he is his own wisdom by which he acts, he is his own power by which he rules. It depends on nothing external of him. Everything living owes its existence to him. I'll read Psalm 150. Everything living owes its existence to God. That's why Psalm 150 says, Let everything that has breath, not everything that has a car, not everything that has a house. If you have bread, God says, let praise the Lord, praise Him in His sanctuary, praise Him in the firmament of His, in, in, praise Him in His mighty firmament, praise Him for His mighty acts, praise Him according to His excellent greatness, praise Him with the sound of the trumpet, praise Him with the lute and the harp, praise Him with the tambourine and dance, praise Him with string instruments and flute, praise Him with loud cymbals, praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has bread. Praise the Lord. is far above all principality and power and might and dominion. Infinitely above all of them. He created them. So God is such that God is infinitely above all, yet is within the midst of all. Because he fills everywhere with himself. So this is, conf this is from Ephesians chapter 1, by the way, verse 2021, 20, from 19, 2021. 20, so we see the fact that being in God and having this great monarch, this great monarch that is our father, that is our lord, that is our savior, that is one spirit with us, is far above. That is, I mean, God helping us by his spirit to bring our hearts to that point whereby we start seeing ourselves that we are not, we are, we are far above all works of darkness. That means in the place of authority, in the place of prayer, we cannot help but give thanks seeing what God has done or seeing the greatness and the majesty of his being because I think that's part of one of the reasons God reveals more of himself to us so that our worship, our praise of him will just go to another level because that is what makes us stand in awe of him. By the time he starts showing us different aspects of his being, we are like, wow, wow. And we just see every other thing as nothingness. So the entire universe is not large enough to display his glory. It's not large enough to contain it. So the whole theater of this universe is just a minute aspect of the glory of God that is being displayed. Every monarch has its own glory. But the glory of this monarch is such that it is immeasurable. This glory is such that the whole entire universe, even multiply it by a billion, if it was bigger than this by a billion, multiple fold, it's still insufficient to display the glory. And that's why the angels are shouting and crying and praising. Uh, uh, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. Revelations chapter 5, verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, What is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing? And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and as such as in the sea and are all that are in them. I hear saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. So as he was neither born nor created, he can never cease to be. He cannot cease to be his existence. He cannot will his own destruction. He cannot will his own uh, non-existence. But he can, in his sovereign power, can reduce any creature to the state of non-existence. So today we've been able to look and talk a little bit about the great monarch himself, the God of the heavens and the earth, the God over all the earth, the God of righteousness, the King of righteousness, the King of the ages, the King of all the earth, the King of glory, the King, the Lord strong and mighty, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the King who is his own light by which he sees, the King who is his own habitation, the King who is in need of nothing, the King who everything is subservient to him, everything is subject to him, the King who depends on nothing outward of him the king who is his own blessedness the king that nothing can be conferred upon him is the great monarch because as a monarch that is kind-hearted towards his creature everything he does is in righteousness the brightness of his presence is his goodness his goodness is inexhaustible he's matchless in all his way his words are immutable 
His throne is without succession. His reign is eternal. He has immortality. He alone possesses immortality. He alone is the only wise God. Every other thing is foolish before him. His wisdom, before his wisdom, we stand silent. This great monarch in his kind-heartedness, his mercy is evermore. His grace is such that it has appeared to all men, bringing salvation to all. Everything living owes its existence to him. He doesn't depend on the praise of any creature. He is most blessed in himself. That we praise him is to our own advantage. If we don't praise him, he is most blessed. He beholds all things by beholding himself. All things are naked before him. Nothing is invisible to him. For all things are... He doesn't need an informant to tell him anything for his all knowing himself. All things are naked. No one can hide themselves. No one can escape his sight. Said there has never been any like him. There will never be any like this our God. We could never have a better God. We could never have a better deity. In his sovereignty, he can make one to be happy, joyful forever or miserable forever. But the joy for us is that this God is good to all. He said, let us give thanks to this God. He said, let us praise Him, this God. He said, let everything that has breath praise this mighty God. God is in His own class. God cannot be compared with any. God is His own habitation, His own existence. He didn't originate from anywhere, neither will He ever expire with anything. This same God is the God that has redeemed us, the one we call our Father and our strength. What a joy to this great monarch. Hallelujah to God the Father. Hallelujah to God the Son. Hallelujah to God the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.